There has to be some common sense. Yes, sir, they have the car stopped in town at the ranch, Michael We still don't know who pulled the trigger. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Police Off the Cuff, Real Crime Stories. I'm your host, Bill Cannon, a retired 27-year veteran sergeant of the NYPD. Folks, we have some breaking news, and I was on at 12.15, and we had this news then, but it wasn't confirmed yet. But right now, it looks like uh, they have spotted um, Casey White on some video surveillance in Evansville, Indiana. Security camera footage at a business in Evansville, Indiana, shows a man who investigators believe may, may be Casey White, one of two people involved in this national manhunt out of Alabama. The security camera footage seen uh, as was at Weinbeck Car Wash, which, which is just off South Weinbeck Avenue in Evansville. Uh, the news was broken uh, earlier, and the U.S. Marshals were investigating in, in Evansville after a stolen vehicle was found that may have been connected to Casey White and former Alabama correction officer Vicki White. <clears throat> the investigation began after a vehicle that was stolen in Tennessee was discovered in, in Evansville. Investigators believe the vehicle may be connected to the investigation surrounding Vicki and Casey. Uh, crews at the car wash and the, uh, were there till the U.S. Marshals arrived. And due to the sensitivity of, of the investigation, the amount of information able to release has been very limited. Vicki and Casey were seen together on camera, leaving Lauderdale County Detention Center on Friday, April 29th, when Vicki told call workers she was transporting Casey to the courthouse alone. After several hours passed by, they were both reported missing. Uh, there, I don't think there's, at this point, there is really any doubt that, that the fella, and I'm going to show you... Um, uh, it's not a video. It's a still photograph. I'm going to show you the comparison of this. I'm going to share this onto the screen. And it's it's very, um, there you see it. I mean, it's not as clear right now because it's it's not a full screen image. But one of the dead giveaways, this, and, and you know, when, when, you, when you're a police officer or when you deal in the identification of criminals, some of the things you have to focus on, of course, look at his right arm. And I know you can't get up close and personal with this, but I'm sure law enforcement knows a thousand percent right now that that's him. His right arm, it's the perfect sleeve of a tattoo. And another dead giveaway is his big ears. Some people castigated me for talking about his big ears uh, earlier in the, in, the, uh, in the broadcast. But that ultimately is one of the things that's going to get him identified. Here's another still photo of him. And you can see. And I'm sure that if we could watch the video uh, moving, we would be able to look at more of his body language and see that that is undoubtedly him. I mean, this is an exciting um, exciting occurrence right now. And I, I want to thank all you folks in the chat who um, let me know about this when we were live at 12.15 and all the folks that are uh, sending me messages on social media and letting me know because I, I'm 100% sure that this is him. You know, and Duty, I watched Duty Ron earlier, and Duty Ron's a great broadcast, broadcast, a great content provider, and also he was a great NYPD warrant detective. And I believe me, he knows this is the guy. One of the problems that we have right now is where is Vicky? All right. And that's disturbing to all of us in law enforcement. Where is Vicky right now? Because she's not seen on this video. Could that mean something nefarious has happened to her? Absolutely. And that's been our fear all along. This guy is a piece of shit. He's a murderer. He's a six foot nine inch bag of shit. And I, I, I'm baffled sometimes when I read in the chat, some of you folks that are actually rooting for this guy to get away. It makes me sick. You know, I've, I've read some really horrendous things in the chat in regards to this guy. And there's no doubt this guy is a criminal. And thank God the, the U.S. Marshals are on his tail right now. And I think 
there's a very good chance they're going to capture him very soon. But this is not going to go down peacefully, folks. And we've been telling you that all along. And this guy, this six foot nine Casey White, uh, a, a half a nutcase, could be off his meds. He's a violent, violent guy. But, you know, this is a positive thing happening right now that he's been spotted. And it's, it's, it's just an incredible thing that um, the U.S. Marshals, all of them, they connected the dots, this car that was stolen in Tennessee near to where that red SUV was dumped. Uh, that car was stolen very close to there. They put two and two together. They were right on this in Ev Evansville, Indiana. And lo and behold, they pulled some video up, and it looks like it could be him. Right now, I think my uh, co-host, Phil, is on the scene. Phil, you uh, you on the air here? Yes, I got you, Billy. I'm actually out and about. I uh, touched base with you earlier. You told me about the uh, current developments. Uh, yeah, I'm very concerned uh, that she's uh, – where is she? Why is she not in that video? That's very concerning. I did see the reports earlier that there was a vehicle – recovered that uh, believed to have been tied to Casey White. So, uh, yeah, this is getting uh, starting to get a little more troubling. And I believe what you said to be true, that they're closing in on him. And uh, uh, I hope it's not going to be a, a violent end to the situation. But, uh, you know, he is a three-time loser. He's got uh, nothing to lose at this point. Uh, you know, sentenced to 75 years in jail, waiting trial on another murder. So the uh, chances of him ever seeing the light of day are not good, obviously. So that makes him just a little bit more desperate. But uh, I don't think it's going to be long before uh, he is um, captured. And, uh, you know, let's hope it's just not a violent capture. You know, one of the things that folks in the chat, you know, were saying this may not end well. And, you know, folks, I'm sorry uh, you don't like me saying that. But, you know, something we've been there. We've been, we've been shot at. We've had all these things happen to us. We know all the bad things that could happen. This guy's a career criminal. He's a bad, bad guy. You folks can sit in the chat and pretend this isn't reality, but this is reality. And I want to know at this point, where is Vicky? You know, where is she? Where, where, what are her whereabouts? And you can just sort of uh, surmise that it's, it potentially could not be good. Uh, so Sorry, uh, Sonjo, sorry, jumped out of my comment. I doubt that if she was with him, this camera shot would not have happened. She's much smarter in my view. Listen, I don't think either one of them are very smart, all right? Uh, everyone's given her too much credit. She took off. She helped a, a career criminal escape from jail. Let's not talk about how smart she is. She's not very smart, you know? Karen Broderick, he has probably already killed her. It's a potential. I hope not. I hope that's not true. But, folks, you know something? This is Absolutely. one of those times... When law enforcement has to all get on the same page, uh, you know they they're they're going to give a full court press down there, and um, let's let's hope that they capture this guy and that uh, it it they capture him without incident. You know, um, on the Bill, I got to make a quick comment about about Vicky White's state of mind. I mean, there's people in the chat that are giving her a little too much credit, as you said, but her state of mind, she's obviously delusional. She's living in a fantasy. I mean, she's there's no way that this was ever going to come out, you know, that they were going to live happily ever after. It's it's obvious. I think that's really clear and obvious to everyone, uh, whether you're law enforcement or you're just an everyday John Q citizen. This is not going to end well for her. She's going to wind up being captured. Hopefully she's not. Uh, you know, she's not dead already, but uh, her, her state of mind is delusional. You know, this is a fantasy that they're trying to live out. And, uh, you know, he has desperation. He's in jail for the rest of his life. So he's in a different state of mind. But her state of mind, I, I don't give her credit for, you know, being so smart. She's in a delusional state. She's obviously not stable. So just want to make that point, Bill. Folks, there's the the, the photo uh, that, that was made from the video camera. Now, you also have to realize that uh, photographs made from video, usually the resolution isn't as good as, as if it was a first resolution from a regular camera. And you could see side by side, one of the main, main giveaways, and I said this before, when you look at his right arm, his tattoo is ex almost exactly uh, the tattoo. I mean, it, that is him. There is no doubt in my mind, 100% from looking at thousands of photos during my police career, that is him. I'm sure if we played the video, you would be able to see his body language, his walk, the way his gait, the way he moves. That is 1,000% Casey White. And the other thing is, as you look at his big fat Dumbo ears 
and some people criticized me for saying that before. I don't care. I've been in this business for 27 years. He's got Dumbo ears. That's a great identifier for this guy. And besides the tattoos and everything else, those ears are a dead giveaway for this guy. Listen, physical characteristics when you're in our line of work are obviously very important when you're looking for a suspect. Uh, making, you know, light of it, the Dumbo ears, whatever. The point is you're pointing out something that somebody might give a second look at a guy that's a, a menacing figure, could be him. They look, they notice the ears. That's something that might really key in on, on a person that spots them. Uh, you know, listen, obviously the walls are closing in on him. Uh, let's just hope and pray that she's still unharmed and she obviously is going to need some, you know, mental, uh, mental help. Obviously what she did, she threw away her whole life, threw away her whole career. Uh, you know, whatever it is that's going on in her mind, she needs to, uh, it needs to be addressed. And uh, the walls are closing in on him. It's going to be a matter of time, Billy. I, I just got a feeling that it's going to probably be sometime real soon, maybe within the next couple of hours. Uh, you know, obviously the marshal service is all over this. They're the greatest, um, you know, hunters of, of humans uh, in existence in the United States. So uh, I think they're going to be all over this. And, uh, you know, they're putting out so much information. Uh, they're doing real time almost um, updates on this. So the public's help is going to be uh, greatly uh, important in this case. And if he spotted, uh, it sounds like they zeroed in on a location already. So uh, it's not going to be long for him to be, uh, you know, to be brought to justice and captured. Tara Ellis, uh, yeah, a police off the cuff. Brian Enton interviewed the place where the SUV video was taken. It was from last Tuesday. He's long gone, I'm afraid. Well, no, I, I think what you were talking about, he interviewed, I, he may have interviewed the gentleman who had his, um, I think it was like a Ford F-150 was stolen from the area right where that uh, Ford Edge was dumped. And he had, was talking about how he put all kinds of money into his SUV and it was stolen and he was heartbroken. That, I believe, is the truck that they stole. So that uh, all of this stuff, as we say, we're connecting the dots, as we as we say in law enforcement. Uh, we're connecting the dots here. J.H., it's just unbelievable to me that people who work in any form of law enforcement would think that they can get away with this. Yeah, well, look, she took a huge chance, and uh, it, it's going to turn out to, to uh, go really, um, really bad. Janice Martin, they could have split up. Let's hope they split up and that he didn't, he didn't kill her. Something nefarious didn't happen to her. But look, this guy's an unstable career criminal. When we keep telling you guys that for some reason, you choose not to believe us. This guy's a bad, bad guy, all right? Uh, Mike Whitcomb, the way his tattoos stand out, you think he would keep them covered? What a genius. Well, that's why he's in prison, because he's not a genius, all right? that You guys, everyone acts surprised, you know? They act surprised when this genius, he's not a genius. That's why he's in state prison. And yeah, he doesn't cover up his tattoos because, you know, he's not a smart guy. Crime soap opera. I'm shocked he's walking around, had a no hat. Is he high and feeling invincible? You know, look, very, very possibly could be high. He's been out of prison now for uh, 9, 10, 11 days now, you know, so he may be feeling a little bit cocky. So, one of the things we realize, guys, is that they're all over this. They probably sent 100 agents to this area. They're going all over the place. They're looking for reports. Where is he? Are they moving around? Do they have a different vehicle? Uh, now, that, look, they, they stole this vehicle. Could they very possibly be stealing another uh, uh, vehicle so they could stealthily move about without raising any attention? Absolutely. Uh Janice Martin, she could get away easier alone. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, they this, that's the whole psychology of this. They want to be together, or she wants to be with him. You think she would just split away from him? I don't think so. Katie Lynn, probably a lot less opportunities for him to eat, too, could cause weight loss. Well, you guys are talking about in his photo, you're saying that he looks like he lost weight. He's not eating all of that high-starch prison food for the last 11 days, so maybe he actually did lose some weight. You know, it's like Phil leaving home. He's not going to eat all that pasta, you know? So uh, in, in the case of this guy, Casey White, he's not eating all that high starch prison food, you know? Um, Kichera, WAA31 is a couple other interesting videos. One is a first look at the orange car that was just towed and a video made of several mug shots that show different looks. Look, everyone looks different. You look at pictures of yourself 
you can show 10 different pictures of yourself in the last year. And in all of the pictures, you could look differently. That's the nature of, of photographing people. And that's, that's just a fact of reality. Phil, you want to comment on that? I'm not hearing you, Phil. I lost Phil's uh, audio there. Yeah, I lost your audio. So I can't, uh, let me see. Hello, Phil, can you hear me? Yeah, you know what? My mic got clicked off. Billy, real quick, I just wanted to make a comment on, I don't want any of the people in the in the chat or any of our subscribers to get offended by how we characterize things most people don't meet individuals like casey white in their life we, we met people like that on a daily basis we understand the psyche of someone who is facing prison time somebody who's a three-time loser like him is never going to get out now he's using her he's using her as an avenue to be uh, free and to get out of prison. She, in her mind, from what it sounds like and what we know, she has this delusional fantasy that she's going to be with him. They're going to live happily ever after. Obviously, she's not stable, but he's the one that's in control. He's a, a, a very cunning, he's a, a, a lifelong criminal. He's he's just a, a criminal. And, you know, so if we characterize it, most people make be offended by it but they have to realize we dealt with people like this on a daily basis we understand the psyche of a criminal we understand the the the, the criminal mind and and what he's liable to do and and you know based on previous experience dealing with these individuals that's how we come to these conclusions so again we might be a little bit harsh in, in the way we describe them or how we talk about them but that's the reality of it folks this is reality this is true crime it's living out it's being reality of it and it just fact it's not that we're uh you know just disparaging somebody because we don't like them that's not what it is this is fact we're basing on previous experience so just wanted to get that clear yeah no I, I you know something i don't apologize for anything you know something my law enforcement career speaks for itself i've dealt with hundreds of pieces of shit like this guy you know and when people try to uh, assign human characteristics to this guy that's what gets me upset Alisa Drummond, she wants to be with him. He wants to be out of prison. He probably stole everything from her and ditched her, in my opinion, though I do pray she's found safely. Uh, amen, Alicia Drummond. We all hope that she's found safely, but there's there's 100%. some reality to this stuff that uh, potentially there could some been some problems with this. Uh, we're hoping that the police are all over this and they find these two shortly. Uh, Deborah, I have big ears. I hide with my <laughs> my dad. Had big ears, but was good looking. You have big ears. You have big ears. Well, big ears in this Deborah have become one of the identifiers. And thank God he's got big ears because now he's easier to identify. So I, I don't apologize for talking about his big ears. Uh, Listen, Terrence if he had Cedar a Hills. Limp, we'd, be, we'd be talking about a limp if he had a limp or if he had a, a he, he was in a cast or whatever the characteristic is. That's what we'd be talking about. Uh, you know, in this particular case, he's a, a hulking individual and he has big ears. So it is what it is. That's why we're, we're bringing that point that that's why we're talking about it. You know, I, I'm MCM. There's a group of online groups that troll to intentionally support the perp. You know, I read someone in one of the other online groups that actually was saying she hoped that he and, uh, and Vicky get away. Uh, like what, what, I mean, horrendous. Like, are you rooting for the police or are you rooting for this, this bad guy? And if you're rooting for this bad guy, you definitely shouldn't be listening to us. You know, you shouldn't be listening to Police Off the Cuff. Folks, this is Police Off the Cuff, real crime stories. If you like our podcast from a law enforcement perspective, please go on our YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. Ring that bell. And if you want to support us, we have a Patreon. Uh, we have three different levels. And we have a YouTube channel members with five different levels. And you see the folks in the chat that are in the green font. They're members of our YouTube family, and we really appreciate these folks. And folks, you can join us too. You can be part of this YouTube family. And uh, we, we, talk, we talk the way it is. We talk real law enforcement. We walk the walk. We talk the talk. And uh, we also have New York accents, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> but Billy, real quick, I just may, gotta make a, a real quick comment. I'm gonna have to sign off in a minute or two, but... Um, Think about this. Now, you, there's people that are out there that are cheering for or hoping for their safe exit into freedom. Now, 
this is a dangerous individual. Now, never mind her. She's delusional. She's in a fantasy. This is a dangerous individual. He's wanted in another murder. He's being put on trial for a separate murder. And he's already convicted to 75 years in jail for numerous other offenses. This is not a guy that you want out and about. He could be in a 7-Eleven buying a cup of coffee, bump into you and assault you or kill you. So think about it. Or any other, you know, just pick any crime he's capable of. So this is uh, not someone that you want on the street. This is the reason for prison and incarceration. There are just people that should not be out and about in the world. And this is one of those individuals and shame on anybody that's rooting for these two to get away with it. Uh, that's really terrible. I, I really can't even fathom something like that. In the world we live in today, the way, what's going on in the world? I mean, do we need uh, a psychotic, uh, you know, uh, career criminal on the streets? I don't think so, Bill. No, we got enough of them. Kerry Schacht, great detective Kerry Schacht, Mel Lavala recipient. Thank you so much for your support. He says, just the facts. That's it. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. You know, that's right. Uh, we got some good NYPD, great NYPD supporters in this chat. Uh, Ashley Higgins, you're all just doing your job and pointing out details to watch for. You're all doing an amazing job. Keep it up. Ashley Higgins, thank, thank you so you. much. I love when you use you all too, because they don't frequently use that in New York City, but that's yes. that's great. We appreciate that. So, guys, Billy, you know, Billy, we, we, I got to sign off, Billy. I'm just getting to an appointment. I'll try and come back in a little bit, but if not, hopefully we'll be doing a show later today. If there is developments. Hopefully this guy's going to be captured today. And like I said, hopefully without incident. And I hope and pray that she's safe, even though she's part of it. She's obviously a misguided, a delusional individual that needs uh, psychological help, but let's hope that she's uh, found safe. Absolutely. Phil, I'll see you later. Thanks for your okay. input. We'll talk right. soon. Thank you very much. Okay. So guys, yeah. So you see what we're, 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 we're just um, Tara Wells. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Brian Enton said that the video of Casey at the car wash was from Tuesday. Would the marshals hold that video from the public for nearly a week? Very possible because they were want they wanted to be all over this. I guess they didn't want any distractions. So yeah, it's it's very possible that they did hold it for that amount of time. Uh, this is the first time I'm hearing that. Which if that is from Tuesday, that also puts them uh, at a little bit of disadvantage because now instead of him them being hot on his trail, they're not so hot on his trail right now. But thank you so much, Tara Wells, for giving me that information. I did not know that. And uh, that, and I want to thank all you folks in the chat, all you channel members, all you Police Off the Cuff family for texting me, emailing me, and letting me know what's going on because I can't be on this. I was on, I was on live earlier today at 12.15 while this was breaking. And uh, – Amy K, he won't be taken peacefully. We've been saying that, guys, and, you know, some of the folks in the chat don't like that too bad. Uh, you know, we give it to you as it is. Uh, Rob Kelly, I hope Canada is on alert. There are a few spots that align with this path where the border is passable. Boston, she's a dirtbag, too. What if this asshole hurts an innocent person? Boston, you know something? I agree with you. She's complicit in this, and she's responsible for whatever happens from from now on in, for, from the day that they escaped, she is responsible. Christina Marty, I think he killed her, took her money, and there you go. Well, Christina Marty, uh, there's, that's a possibility. We don't, um, we don't have any evidence of that, so I don't want to just uh, say that because people that tune in right now, they may not know what's actually going on. They may take that as, uh, as being the real deal. Sana Elise Hulth Johnson, you and Duty Run are the best on YouTube. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. That's that NYPD family. You know, NYPD, the best cops, best detectives in the world. We like to say that anyway. And uh, we, we actually do believe that, you know. Um, Daniel Bullion, uh, I'm surprised they stole a car as it would catch up pretty quick. So uh, I think she may be dead possibly. Look, guys, I know we're um, – Ev Evansville is in Indiana, guys, uh, in case you didn't know. Evansville is in Indiana. Um, Jersey Devil, I agree with Boston, uh, too. Absolutely should be as responsible, if not even more so, if any innocents are hurt or killed. So, you know, guys, one of the things that I had earlier um, criticized was that, you know, just uh, today, the um, – 
Lauderdale sheriff was taking into custody that red SUV 11 days after the fact. I was saying, like, is that crazy? It took them 11 days to invoice that stolen SUV that surely forensically could give them some leads. It took them 11 days. I really had a problem with that. I think that was a little bit crazy. Uh, Banjo, uh, Banjo Zep7, appreciate you and duty run. Thank you so much. Uh, Joyce, they made their choice the wrong one. They are wanted criminals. That's for sure. They are definitely wanted criminals. This is what she may uh, look like at this point. Um, we don't know for sure, but um, she may very well look like that because, um, you know, she cha wanted to change her her uh, her look. The other thing is that she may have lost weight. It appears um, it appears that that he has lost weight. You know, over over the 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 11 days they've been out of the uh out of uh prison he may have lost weight so she potentially could also have lost weight i'm going to show you a little bit of um of uh another video we had of her staying in a hotel 2 days before they escaped so again we spoke about how all of this was uh, very much planned. Not a quality in newly released video shows Vicki White checking out of a hotel 10 days ago before going to her job as a corrections officer as usual. But just hours later, according to authorities, she helped spring a violent felon, Casey White. And the pair has been confounding law enforcement ever since. I really, um, you know, had hoped uh, that we would have had them in a couple of three days max. We've learned in the week leading up to the escape, Vicki White went to a coal shopping center and purchased men's clothing. The sheriff says she also visited an adult toy store. Just confirmed that this was well planned and thought out. I mean, obviously, you know, she bought some clothes for him. Uh, you know, the adult store thing, I don't know what that was about. That timeline setting the stage for an unlikely escape. The 17-year veteran of the sheriff's department assisting a man convicted of violent crimes and accused of capital murder. Their getaway car, an orange Ford Edge, spray-painted in just one area, found about an hour south of Nashville, startling neighbors. Heard a noisy truck, and it sat and idled for the longest time, so I looked out the window a few times and like, what's going on? I didn't know. The SUV eventually moved to a towing lot for a week. Valuable time lost as authorities try to track down the pair. Was, White's former know, attorney, Dale Bryant, Bryant, who was appointed to represent him in several appeals, warns the six foot nine felon is likely off his medication, making him even more dangerous. Casey is someone who uh, suffers from mental illness. When he is not on his medications, he has a tendency to self-medicate by using methamphetamine. The rewards leading to their arrest have now been up to $15,000 for Casey and 10000 for Vicky. As the U.S. Marshals hope these new photos help them to break the case. And the car that they used to get away, which authorities say had nothing inside of it, is now headed back to Florence, Alabama, where this all began. As for how these two got out of Tennessee, investigators right now are examining the possibility that Vicki may have had some help from a former inmate or somebody else. We'll be back to you. Let's hope they track him down to a dangerous guy. Sam, thanks so much. So, folks, that's sort of still like refreshing our memory of some of the stuff that's been going on. Um, dangerous guy? Yeah, yeah, real dangerous guy. And I, I can't understand some of the folks. Barbara Ann, back to blue always, for sure. Milwaukee civilian, good to see you. Alicia Drummond, yes, agreed. Love both of the channels. Thank you guys for uh, supporting myself and duty, Ron. We have Lieutenant, the great Lieutenant Peter Pranzo. Obviously, they are both mentally challenged. Motives of the issues are for later discussions right now. The two perps on the run must be apprehended. This is not TV. Lives are at stake. And you notice how the great Lieutenant Peter Prando, Medal of Valor recipient, great NYPD lieutenant, refers to them both as perps because that's what they are. They are both perps. They are not. She is no longer a correction officer. She is a perp. Uh, Crime soap opera, maybe they thought they would come back to the SUV, just the thought. I don't think so. I think the red SUV, I think they left it there to be discovered. Uh, if this is the, the Ford F-150 that they stole in Tennessee, 
I think that they probably knew that there would be an alarm on that and they would probably try to get rid of that also, you know? So, um, Harlow, I wonder how many times they frequented hotels in lieu of mental health evaluations. Well, we can't conjecture on that. Right now, what we're hoping for is um, them to get caught. You know, the um, Fugitive Enforcement Division of some of the greatest folks at doing their job. Brad Bolin, Evansville, Indiana, is just under three hours from where that Ford Edge was found. I wonder now if it's indeed theirs, how long it has been in that area, trying to figure it out if they're moving faster. Uh, Maureen Gunn, I so agree with you, especially about processing the car. You know, I couldn't understand why it took them 11 days. They're just uh, invoicing that car today. I'm like shocked at that. You know, that's incompetent law enforcement. You know, that is not good investigation. You wait 11 days to invoice a car that could hold some uh, potentially hold some really good leads in it. Um, Adam Zisselman, her thought process is far from normal. Her plan was well thought out, and she's lost her mind. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Uh, you know, DK, doesn't every gas station in America have a camera? Shouldn't gas stations be looking up their surveillance video every day? They have to get gas, and they have to pee at some point. Well, I think... That is, DK, good point. I think that's up to the investigators to pinpoint the route they've been going. There's sometimes also on the roads, there is um, license plate readers. and But, you know, in this incident, they knew this car was stolen. I don't know how early that they knew that they, they would, in fact, stole this car. But there was a pretty good, there was a pretty good hunch when this car was stolen that it could have been them. All right, that it was these two, Casey and Vicky, that stole this car because it was so close to the proximity of the dumped red SUV. So they had a good head start. Uh, fugitive enforcement, I think, would have been all over that. Um, they would have thought about that right away. Um, William Can, this is very interesting to me. This case is very interesting. It's catching the imagination of the whole country. Uh, it's not that often that a correction officer assists a career criminal murderer who's six foot nine inches tall to escape from prison. So yes, this is this is an interesting case. Um, Suman Shri, uh, Sergeant Bill, how many personal crimes has she committed so far? For example, I believe fake ID is a felony. Suman Shri, you know something that she's committed lots of crimes, but what we're more concerned with is the threat to her and to the public. We still hope that she will be recovered alive and that uh, this will end um, peacefully. But uh, the longer they're out there, uh, the less faith I have in that. Um, Officer Porkchop, he played this broad from day one. She's an idiot and he's too tall to hide for long. Yeah, I think I have to agree with you. Um, uh, when was this security camera video taken? Are we closing the timeline or this a, a week ago? I think this is several days ago uh, that this video is from. So it's not like they're hot on the trail right now. If the in, if the information from Brian Enton uh, is correct, it's not like they're hot on the trail. They're on the trail, but they're not hot on it. They're days away. So could they, they could be anywhere right now. Could they be in Canada? Yes. Uh Folks, you know, I mean, uh, Oregon Outback, 10 days of love shacking could certainly cause them both to shed a few pounds. You know, there's some humor in the chat, too, and when I see it, I'll read it every once in a while. Uh, Bonnie Walker, um, some will be on his side to prove he is a tough guy. Okay, you can do that. But this isn't a game, a win, win or lose, lose. This is a criminal on the run. And more uh, so, Bonnie, is that he, the, the danger that the public is in from this mutt you know, the public is in a great deal of danger. Um, William Ken, if this guy is wanted for capital murder, why isn't this live on a daily trying to find these folks? Well, because the way that the Fugitive Enforcement Division works is that they need a bit of clandestineness. They need a bit of stealthiness to move around. They can't have cameras following them. They have to do their job without, 
you know, lights, cameras and action on this, not television. This is real life. You know, um, they keep showing a younger photo of her. Well, that's, you know, there's, here's another photo of her. Uh, and of course the photo that they're, they keep referring to is the photo of her with, uh, hair dyed brown uh the the photos in her uniform of course are showing her with uh with blonde hair and they talk about her body language that she walks with a waddle um you know all of that stuff is important with identifying someone uh this is the photo and this is the picture that's been shown over and over and over and over again on television uh, that's the photo of them escaping which left no doubt that she was a hundred percent involved in this, you know, um, that, um, that she was a hundred percent involved in this and that there was no doubt that she was on board, you know, she was on board with this, um, that she wasn't being held against her will or that, um, she wasn't being, uh, forced to do anything. I mean, that could be her, she can claim that when this is over with. But for right now, uh, he won't make it to Canada. Uh, James Lloyd says that. Um, look, there's there's a possibility that they could get caught very soon, or there's a possibility they could be out there for a while. Look, they've been out there since the 29th. Today is the 9th, so it's like 10, 11, going on 12 days. So it's the longer they're out there, the scarier this is for the public. Um, uh, C. Ellis, has it been established if Casey uh, has ex-con friends in Indiana? Look, all of the investigative part of this is the um, Fugitive Enforcement Division. I think they're all over this, and they will know those answers. We don't know it. It's just like the feds, the FBI, Fugitive Enforcement. They keep this stuff very close to the vest. Deborah Sunflower. People are hoping he gets away. How would you feel if he had murdered your family member or beaten and vowed to kill your daughter? He thinks nothing of taking a human life. There may be more. They're very, uh, Deborah Sunflower, they're very much maybe more. You're 100% right. Karen Broderick, she's disgusting for doing what she did. If anyone gets hurt, she has blood on her hands. If she's not already dead, this case is so shocking. Well, you know something? Let's hope that the Fugitive Enforcement Division is right on his tail, you know. We don't know if that's the case, but let's hope they're the very best at doing what they do. Um, looking upwards, if they know she bought clothes for him, can't they go back and look at the receipts and get pictures of the clothes to let the public know what he might be wearing? Looking upwards, I'm sure the Fugitive Enforcement Division has already done that, and I, I mean, we got to give them credit for the professionals they are. That's a good investigative resource that you just mentioned. And I'm sure excellent investigators like them have done this. Um, JM, hello, Bill. Love the show. Why are they worrying about having a clean vehicle? Could it be that he was there cleaning up the vehicle because it, it's a crime scene? Yeah, very much so. He could have been cleaning up the, video, uh, the vehicle because it is a crime scene. Folks, this is Police Off the Cuff, Real Crime Stories. I'm your host, Bill Cannon. If you're not subscribed to this channel, Please go on our YouTube, hit that subscribe button, give us the thumbs up, ring that bell. And if you want to support us, we have a Patreon with three different levels and you want to become part of our YouTube family. You see the folks in the chat with the green font. They're part of our YouTube family and you can join us on YouTube. And we have five different levels of our YouTube family that you could join if you want to support us. Um, Bongo Bill. I thought it was odd they are taking the Ford Edge back to Alabama after this long. I think, Bongo Bill, they should have been all over that. I don't know what took them 11 days to invoice that car. Very strange to me that that's not, you know, investigation. You're supposed to do that stuff right away. William can. I really could use 25000 right now. I'm poor and broke and work 40 hours a week. If I knew them, I'd turn them in for it. But they already definitely have helped somebody hiding them. Yes. I mean, I think that I had mentioned earlier that I wish that the award was a little bit bigger because, you know, uh, the money part of it is, is what gets people to talk, is what gets people to turn uh, this desperado in, you know? 
Uh, Shannon Bloom, the system in that jail facility was described as chaotic at best. Doesn't appear that too many of the people in charge were world-class thinkers. So Vicki White didn't have to be a rocket scientist. Um, Shannon Bloom, I agree with you. You were 100% correct. Um, it's uh, Jails by their nature and prisons by their nature are a little bit of a shit show and not the nicest places to be. Ryan Anderson, I mean, it's hard not to feel some empathy for a person who is so lonely that they would aid a confessed murder in escaping just for a chance at love. Uh, Ryan, uh, you can feel that way. I don't feel that way. I feel that she should be held under the strictest, if she's arrested, get the strictest penalties allowed by law. She put society and put many hundreds of thousands of people at risk over this guy. So I don't sympathize with her right now. IPS Samantha, why is everyone seem to be giving Vicky excuses like uh, her ex-husband died? Midlife crisis. Oh, Casey manipulated her. Stop giving people an authority excuses. She knew exactly what she was doing. Samantha, I 100% agree with you. You're right. Why are people making excuses for her? She doesn't need excuses. She needs to be held accountable for the horrible thing that she's done, you know, and she definitely needs to be held accountable play a little bit of this uh, video that we've seen a million times here. Seems like something out of a movie. The search for a convict and the corrections officer accused of helping him escape. Vicki White and Casey White, no relation, have been on the run since Friday. And some of this surveillance video right here, this is from the Lauderdale County Sheriff's Department. It shows the moment Vicki possibly facilitates Casey's escape from jail. I want to get out to WVTM 13's Bria Douglas. She's been following the case for us. Uh, she spoke with the sheriff, shocked by what has rocked what he thought was a secure facility. Former inmates in the Lauderdale County Jail are shocked. So, folks, as you realize, this video that you're watching here is from several days ago. And, of course, this is updated to now where they dumped a stolen car in Evansville, Indiana. But this is some of the video that we saw Early on in this investigation, the former deputy who they knew well helped a convicted killer escape from jail. You knew her, you loved her. She was that type of person, just an awesome lady. Vicki White served 17 years at the Lauderdale County Jail. In that time, protocol was for two officers to escort inmates to and from the jail. This video shows White acting alone. Sheriff Rick Singleton walks us through the escape. This is his cell block, so he would have come out of that door, come over against this hall, and come down this way. Director White instructed the deputy to bring him to booking. They had brought him into this booking room. When he brought in here, he had been seated on one of these benches and prepared for transport. Basically means put handcuffs, leg shackles, and they're connected by a chain. Came out this door over here, and this is the door from the video. They come out this door, came out here into the sally port. Of course, the car was, the car was sitting right here put him in the back seat, and then they drove out the door. The couple had a six-hour head start before jail staff realized they were on the run. Lifelong friend Debbie Burbank doesn't think Vicki acted alone. Vicki's always been a good girl. I went to school with her. It's got to be other people were involved, and Vicki's just a scapegoat. Others who knew her say Casey White manipulated her. I feel like if she had anything to do with it, it was definitely love, because I don't see Vicki doing that, because she's always loved her job. Sheriff Singleton believes the pair had a two-year non-sexual relationship where Vicki showed favoritism toward Casey by giving him extra food. I always say that they don't call, call these guys con men for nothing. You know, they, they con. And uh, it's not the first time a female in, uh, corrections officer has been uh, wooed by some inmate. U.S. Marshals offering a $5,000 reward for finding Vicki White and a $10,000 reward for finding Casey White. Authorities now believe the couple could be in the southeast region in Lauderdale County. So, folks, that was some of the earlier video to now fast forward Evansville, Indiana. Uh, where could they be from there? They could be anywhere right now. Um, a good thing is, is that I keep uh, bringing this up, is that the Fugitive Enforcement Division is the very best in the world at doing this. And not only are they good at tracking people, but they're good at doing the investigation. And the investigation, uh, they've been all over this, trust me. Um, DJZ519, uh, 
But we don't 100% know that yet, do we? What if he brainwashed her or threatened her badly to the point she feared him and had to help him? Or are we convinced it was a love affair? I think uh, DJZ519, uh, they have investigative information that, in fact, this was a love affair. I don't think they would put that out there because the the sheriff, uh, that southern gentleman, Rick, Rick Singleton, seems like a hell of a nice guy. He just doesn't strike me as the most competent guy to be in charge of this facility. You can see that he uh, has strong feelings for Vicky. I'm not saying of a romantic nature, of a friendship nature, that he's known her for years and years and years, and he doesn't want to say anything bad about her. But it's tough not to at this point because he, she made everyone in this jail, everyone look bad. And besides the fact that um, she's endangered everyone. Adam Zisselman, I live 15 miles from the Peace Bridge in Buffalo, New York. They will be caught. Um, I went to Adam Zisselman. I went to Buffalo State College. I won't tell you how many moons ago, but many, 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 many years ago, I went to Buffalo State College. I still remember the address, 1300 Elmwood Avenue. So uh, Adam Zisselman, I have a soft spot in my heart for people from Buffalo, New York even though Buffalo Bills always beat beat up the New York Jets, who was my team, you know? So, folks, this is, it's exciting in a way. It's an interesting case. Um, these prison breaks, you know, people aren't supposed to break out of prison. Uh, and in this case, they didn't break out. He was let out. Jay Lord, they keep ignoring the fact her ex-husband was a huge meth dealer and Casey is a meth addict. That is probably how they knew each other, not jail. You know something, uh, Jay Lord, upon investigation, uh, when this is over, we'll find out all the truths to this. But at this point, I don't know that to be true, so I'm not going to spread that rumor. Uh, no brain, no headache. I'm not sure anyone related to this case knows what they are doing. Also, her hair could be pink or blue. Don't assume dark. No brain, no headache. I'm not, I'm not assuming anything. I'm a firm believer in that old expression, when you assume, you make an ass of you and me. Uh, and I don't assume anything. Um, I believe um, Brian Enton uh, confirms to me that a woman who looks like Vicki White was also here. I'm not going to report the kind of car they tra transferred into until that is actually uh, confirmed information. Um, I don't have any updated information other than the fact that they recovered this stolen vehicle that was stolen from the area of Tennessee where they had dumped that red SUV. It looks like Phil Grimaldi is back. How you doing, Phil? I'm good. I am uh, just finished up with my one appointment there. I figured I'd jump back in. Um, yeah, I guess the uh, the world seemed to be closing in on uh, on these two. Yeah, uh, Rebecca Oliver, someone who worked with her, said she looks much older than the pictures being released. That person suggested they release a picture of her with gray hair and aged wheelchair for him, elderly couple. Folks, law enforcement is trained in identifying people. Uh, many times, you know, we would just go out into the street with photographs of perps. And so you think that's an easy match to make? Pick someone out off the street where there's hundreds of people through a photograph ID. Not so easy. I mean, everyone thinks, oh, well, I could do that. Okay, try it one day. Get a picture and go into a crowded uh, city street and see if you can identify someone or pick out someone off the street from a photograph. Not very easy. I think you get better and better at it as you get experience, but it's not an easy thing to do. Michelle M., if he kills somebody else and she's with him, she's going to go up for murder. Also, I would think she's well aware of that, but I think she was thinking with her heart and her needs instead of her brain. Um, Michelle M., I agree with you. Uh, she could go for felony murder, even if she's not the person that commits the murder. It's called acting in concert, you know. Phil? Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, talking about a picture. Now, listen, you, you get a picture if it's a uh, if it's a mugshot, let's say, and you're going to uh, circulate a mugshot. You know, on that particular day, the guy's hair could have been messed or could have been perfect. And then, uh, you know, when you're looking for someone, 
to try and match that photo. Like you said, Billy, it's not an easy thing to do. But uh, if someone spends an, spends a, a period of time observing somebody and you show them a picture, a lot of times the connection can be made. But it's not that easy. It's a little bit difficult. Um, I just think that uh, there's so much media attention on this case. Uh, every you know couple of minutes, if you watch cable news or if you're listening to the radio, it's coming out. Um, they they're staying updated with the uh, with the pictures. Uh, you have the the photo from the from the uh, from the car wash with uh, you know with uh, Casey White's photo where we believe it's him. It looks like it's him. So uh, it's just gonna be a matter of time, and I'm sure that there's gonna be somebody somewhere that's gonna notice something, uh, take a second look, do a double take, and hopefully call 911 and bring this whole thing to an end. This is uh, Brian Entered. This was this was an hour ago. Let's see what Brian Enten has to say. Hey everybody, this is Brian Enton. I wanted to give you a quick update on the manhunt for Vicki and Casey White. Uh, Vicki White is, of course, the corrections officer from Alabama who helped the inmate Casey White escape. Casey White was behind bars on a murder charge. Uh, well, anyway, a pretty significant development. Uh, there are reports that a stolen car linked to the couple has been located in Evansville, Indiana. We know that U.S. Marshals are on the scene. So, folks, we already reported this, but I'm going to just let Brian Enton um, finish it, what he has to say. He's always a great reporter and always Johnny on the spot with this stuff. Um, it's apparently an investigation centered around a car wash. So we are on our way to Evansville, Indiana right now. Uh, this is my producer, Lauren, in the back seat. Luis is driving. We were actually in Tennessee um, this morning. Uh, working on a story in the area near where they located the SUV the couple was using that was abandoned when we got this word uh, about the tip in Indiana. So we're on our way to Indiana now. So it's been a wild um, week plus with this couple. I mean, it's just so many twists and turns, but this would really be significant if this pans out because it's really the first um, time that they would have actually been spotted. Uh, and it would also show that they are headed north from where they were uh, in Alabama. We'll have the latest on all of this coming up on News Nation, uh, News Nation Rush Hour. That starts at 4 o'clock Central, 5 o'clock Eastern. Uh, and then we'll be on throughout the night. So we'll have updates for you later from Indiana. We'll see what we find. All right. Talk so, folks, he's here. You have it. There's uh, boots on the ground. You know, there, there's this is a breaking case. This case has gotten probably not just national interest, but international interest. And the media is all over this. And hopefully, everyone is all waiting to see what uh, the outcome is going to be to this. Uh, DJZ519, regardless, you can't sway to one side without knowing the conclusion to this case. God forbid, what if we hear. Later on that he killed her, then what are the people going to say? Innocent till proven guilty. You know, DJZ519, one of the things I'm just going to bring to your attention is that she made her decision. If that happens to her, she's a big girl, and she made a horrendous decision in breaking this guy out of prison. So if that's, in fact, what occurred, I will feel horrendous that that happened. I feel sorry for her. But she made her decision when she let this six foot nine inch career criminal murderer out of prison. Yeah, I guess that we, we would call that accountability, Bill. I mean, you know, she's got to be held accountable for her actions. And one of the things that she may not have perceived is the danger factor that if she breaks this guy out of jail, he finds that she's no longer uh, useful to him and he does away with her. Uh, that's one of the things that very clearly are possible. Um, and again, the accountability factor is going to be if she is captured uh, alive and safe that she's going to have to be held accountable for what she did. And she's going to, she's definitely going to do some time in jail. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, I think, you know, maybe uh, uh, getting a little ahead of myself, but maybe it'll take into consideration the fact that she's mentally unstable or something like that. And she may not be uh, sent to jail for the rest of her life, but uh, you take a three time loser, a person who's never going to see the light of day and break them out of jail. Uh, you need to be held accountable for that. It's, it's just no question. You know, in the society we live in, we have a law and order society. And uh, this individual should not be on the streets. He's very dangerous. And, um, you know, uh, there's going to be accountability on both ends for him and for her. So uh, whatever, wherever the chips fall, they're going to fall. I just hope and pray that there's going to be uh, a safe outcome for law enforcement. And uh, I'll, I'll call for a safe outcome for both of them, even though, like you said, Bill, she made a uh, decision. Uh, she's a big girl and uh, she has to be held accountable for that. And uh, maybe she didn't perceive the danger. But uh, you know what? Shame on her. Phil, if she didn't perceive the danger, then she wasn't trained very well as a CEO. 
Stockholm Absolutely. syndrome is no joke, that's for sure. But you know something, Stephanie R. Correction officers are trained in what to look out for. They know that that can happen to them, Stockholm syndrome. They know they can identify with the inmate, and the inmate can identify with their captors. That's part of what Stockholm syndrome is. But shame on her that she fell for this. She could have sought help, uh, psychological help perhaps, but let's not uh, give her any outs. She helped this career criminal murderer get out of this prison. Uh, Mel Barrow, I find it mind-boggling that someone can just load a giant man, a murderer at that, with just one woman and walk, drive right out of there. This is crazy to me. Where's the security aspect? Mel Barrow, very, very, very light security. Horrible security. You're 100% right. I will agree with you. Um, uh, Adam Zisselman, there is definitely not going to be a reward of $500,000. I think that uh, they're hoping actually that fugitive enforcement catches them so they don't have to give up the reward, you know. Uh, Baby Doll, definitely Casey on car wash video tattoos are the same. No doubt that's what I think. The car wash video on this guy, it's one and the same. It's him. There's no doubt in my mind, and I've looked at thousands of photos. It's no doubt in my mind that that is him. Folks, this is Police Off the Cuff Real Crime Stories. If you're not subscribed, go on our YouTube, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell. If you want to support us, we have a Patreon, and you can join our YouTube family by becoming of a, a member of our YouTube channel. Phil, you had something to say? No, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, uh, the security lapses, obviously, <laughs> that took place in this case will probably be dealt with down the line. Uh, you know, she was the supervisor in charge, so she was making the decisions, and she was in on this escape plot. So, uh, but I think that there needs to be... Um, you know, a change in policy in that specific jail and probably across the country. Uh, everyone has to look at uh, their safety, uh, you know, uh, protocols because uh, the violations that were done here seem to be uh, very egregious. And uh, we allowed, uh, not me and you, but the, the, the system allowed, um, you know, a very dangerous person to be let out onto the street. Uh, based on this uh, supervisor, you know, uh, Vicki White, that she made this decision. She made up this appointment that he was going to go to. And again, right off the bat, they had a policy in place where two people were supposed to be with an inmate of this size. She violated it. It was on film. There was the things that happened that precluded the escape, uh, you know, with the phone calls back and forth, whether or not she was using aliases or whatever. Those phone calls are taped. They're monitored. There should have been some type of a red flag. Um Again, uh, I saw the sheriff today saying on a news a press conference that uh, people that worked with her, they're in, they're in disbelief, uh, they're mourning, they were crying about it, they feel betrayed. They should feel betrayed, 100%. They were betrayed. When you take a sworn oath to uh, protect and serve and you violate that oath, uh, the, the big time betrayal. Uh, Bill and I have seen it in our uh, history in the NYPD with different corruption cases that went on throughout the department. And uh, it really is a feeling of betrayal. I mean, when we've, we've done shows on the mob cops and when we talk about those two guys, I met and knew one of the mob cops, uh, Louis Epolito, and it was a tremendous betrayal of the badge, what he did. Uh, I don't want to go into that whole story, but uh, I did feel, and every law enforcement officer that has ethics and has uh, a great career, and, and, you know, we take the oath and we, we believe in the system. Uh, when you see something like that that happens, you do feel betrayal. You've, it makes you sick to your stomach when it happens because you know that you would never do something like that. And uh, it's just contrary to everything that we believe in, everything that we do. So imagine a correction officer that's trained to spot things where a, uh, an inmate is going to try and get you into their good graces to gather, uh, whether it be, you know, more food or, or more privileges. They're trained to... Notice that, put the wall up and, and stop it. Obviously, she didn't uh, do that. She fell for it. And uh, her state of mind, her history in her life, uh, like we said, we, we came up with a bit of a profile, I guess you could say, that she must have been unloved and things like that. Uh, she had failed marriage. Uh, she couldn't save her ex-husband from his drug addiction. He wound up dying. So maybe she felt that she could save this individual with the sob story that he must have given her. However... Fantasy, uh, it's not reality. It's uh, it's just going to come to a uh, 
a very bad conclusion for her, whether it's jail time or God forbid that she's uh, harmed by this individual. So again, yeah, the betrayal point that the sheriff made about uh, her colleagues feeling betrayed, I, I could really relate to that. I'm sure you can too, Bill. Jared Lewis, even if she is a senior officer, why would they allow a single female to transport a dangerous criminal? That seems like a gross, gross negligence. Jared, I 100% agree with you. That yep. is, there, there is definitely no procedure in any jail, any prison that should allow that. Uh, guys like Stephanie R., guys like this tend to be abusers to their spouses, their partner. They're trauma-bound, the other person to them by threatening their life, professing love and regret, then threatening their life again. Look, folks, one of the things we've been preaching to you is criminals are not good people. <laughs> and I don't think we're getting through. Someone that goes to prison for murder, he's not a good guy, all right? And I I get baffled by people in the chat expecting, you know, it's like that, that old thing, like you're, you're expecting good results out of shit. And that's not what happens. This guy is a bad, bad guy. And then when he does bad, bad things, a lot of you folks in the chat act like you're surprised. I mean, what are you are you kidding me? I mean, you got to be kidding. Uh, London Girl, hi, Bill and Phil, huge fan and loving how you are both covering this case as there is next to nothing about it in England. There's a lot of coverage wow. here, London Girl, but uh, in fact, I, I this is the second time I jumped on live today. and. Um, my voice is getting a little tired, but uh, <laughs> I'm talking a lot, you know. Uh, <laughs> Brent Rogers, I like that comment. It's Trump's fault. He's helping them. <laughs> well, what's next? I I'm sure the mainstream media. Yeah. Every yeah, something, I'm sure the mainstream everyone, media out there has a story about that, but God, Billy. I'm every sorry. once in a while, there's something funny in the chat, and if I see it, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll repeat it. Very That's funny. That's a good one. That's uh, a good one. Janice Morton may have had expectations, but they didn't work out. Well, I don't know how you can, you know, talking about perusing a jail or a prison for a, a mate, I think that's really picking the low-lying fruit off a tree, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's it's just She not doesn't seem to be lucky in love type of an individual. And uh, Bill, quick comment about uh, the forgiving nature of society. I get it. Society in general happens to be very forgiving and that's not a bad thing in certain situations. We're not talking about someone that was caught shoplifting because their kid was starving and you want to forgive them. That would be a situation where you say, sure, of course, forgive, uh, let it go. But this is a very, very, very dangerous individual. And you and I both know and have experienced it. Uh, nothing good is going to come out of this guy. Unfortunately, he's, he's sentenced to 75 years in jail. And I do get when people, you know, of faith, they want to forgive and they want to give someone a second chance. And I do believe in second chances. The The prison system, system is uh, designed to, uh, you know, uh, incarceration is, is designed to, to bring somebody back into society, to correct them. That's why it's called the correction system, uh, to rehabilitate them. And But there are some people that are just so far gone. Life is that are never going to see the light of day, uh, whether they're, you know, numerous murders or whatever it is. Those people, um, uh, th there's no there's no rehabilitation for them. They may be able to be productive in jail, but they should never be out. This is one of those individuals. This is an extreme case. This is a Charles Manson. This is a, a serial killer, whatever you want to put attached to it. This is not somebody that can be rehabilitated. I don't believe that. And I firmly believe, and I think Bill agree with me, this guy should never be on the streets ever, ever again. He's a danger to society. He's a danger to the communities at large. And that's why we have the system that we have. And, and I get people that want to be forgiving and all of that, but this is not the case where you can rehabilitate someone like Casey White. Rick Smith, the car wash owner, said that, yes, Vicky was there too, and he saw what kind of car they got into when they left the stolen truck there. But he's not allowed to say what the car was per law enforcement. Oh, good. That's a good lead. If, that's, yeah, that, that sounds very promising. If that is the case, all right, I'm hoping that she is still alive. Let's keep our fingers crossed. That's a great thing. And, um, you know, they're not putting out the vehicle. They may have reasons for that. You know, I would tend to put it out there so that way, uh, you know, maybe they feel the fact that, 
She has an AR-15 registered to her, a shotgun, uh, her service weapon, a 9mm. They don't want to do a confrontation where if somebody calls up on them or, or approaches them, there could be civilians injured. So maybe they're, they're pl trying to play it safe. Okay, I'm okay with that. But my general feeling is to trying to get it out there. Bill, what do you think about that? You, would you yeah, I mean, I think, that, I think that you got to use the public in this case because they, yeah. they're – they're always five or six days behind them, it seems right now, at least in this case. And to get fresh information is very important. And then they can close in. Uh, but, you know, it, it shows that they've, they are moving methodically along. They didn't just go out in a blaze of glory. They, it seems like they, they're thinking, they're using their head and not acting stupidly so far. I mean, although their actions of doing what they did stupid, but... Yes. They're uh they're not shooting people, they're not violently uh doing carjackings. Where they get these cars, I don't know, but they've stolen so far uh at least two cars. So um you know what, Bill, in rural communities, sometimes people park the car and leave the key in, in the car sometimes. So uh, it's happened in my own neighborhood where they went into driveways and people left the key fob. You know, the cars don't have an actual key no more. They have a fob and it's in the glove compartment or it's in the ashtray and they just get in, hit the button, and the car starts. So maybe it's one of those situations or him being an, an experienced criminal, maybe he knows how to hotwire a car. You know, you can start a car basically with a screwdriver and a pliers sometimes. So whatever it is there, they seem to be on the run like you said they're not uh, you know they're, they're, they're not moving stupidly they're moving cautiously it seems like I don't want to give them credit for being geniuses like you said but it seems like they're being a little bit cautious about their movements um, I think that's a uh, interesting point though that um, uh, the car wash uh, person is saying the, the owner of the car wash or someone that works there is saying they did spot her as well so let's hope that she's still alive in this picture because the minute she becomes useless to him uh, it's not going to be good for her, I think. No. Diane S. wondered if she was seen spending more time and attention with him out in the open. Uh, that should have been a red flag. Wonder if there was a bigger risk. I'm sure safety protocols, et cetera, now being reviewed. Yeah, well, look, they're, they're going to be spotted. They're going to be caught. There's no doubt they're going to be caught. Time is on the side of law enforcement, not on their side. You know, uh, The longer he's out there, of course, the more dangerous it is. For the public, the more dangerous it is for her. But um, especially if he starts using drugs or drinking, uh, then it's um, it's even it's even more dangerous, you know. Uh, according to Brian you know Karen Bill Livingston, according to Brian Enton, this was last Tuesday. Casey and Vicky were at the car wash in Indiana. The car wash manager alerted law enforcement they didn't act on it quickly. That would be a shame, Carrie Livingston, if that is in fact true. But we're learning sometimes that there's. Um, there's been some uh, lags in the action of law enforcement on this case. So, yeah, it could be that could be true. Billy, I was just going to say that in retrospect, I'm thinking now if they have the information on this other car, uh, maybe they don't have a plate number. Maybe they do have a description of it. Maybe they want a chance to try and, you know, uh, do the jump on them maybe late at night or something like that. If they could locate them, that way they can maybe take them without incident. Um, but I would think that as time goes on, it's probably going to be a point where they'll say, you know what, we need, if they don't develop further information on their whereabouts, they may say, we need to put the information out on the car. Uh, I would think that, uh, that would be the way to go. And again, it's Tuesday. Now we're talking about Monday. It's almost a week. They may have ditched that car too. So, uh, again, uh, we don't know the inner workings of this, uh, investigation. We're not inside the investigation. We're uh, doing reporting from a peripheral point and uh, we're not sure of exactly what law enforcement knows and doesn't know. They may have a stakeout going right now on their location and uh, you know, maybe waiting to jump them at some point. So again, we don't know. Let's hope for that. And uh, I think that uh, if more time goes on, I think they may release if they don't become uh, they, they don't have successful uh, follow ups on the lead. They may uh, put the uh, vehicle information out. Yeah, I, th I think they really should do that earlier rather than later because uh, – I'm leaning know, towards that too, Billy. Yeah, that's for sure. So, guys, um, we this is my second time live today. I'm getting a little uh, voice-weary. Um, folks, if anything other breaking things happen on this case tonight, uh, Phil and I will go back on live. But at this point, I think I've covered all that I can really um, 
cover right now. And I think that, um, Phil, um, if you if you have any last words, I think now is the time to uh, to say them. Well, the last words are this. Uh, we've been talking about this case in the last couple of days. Uh, it seems to be really heating up. The walls are closing in. A lot of new leads, a lot of new information. Uh, I am happy that there is a report that she's been spotted with him. So that means that as of Tuesday, when this spotted the car, when they were spotted at this car wash, she was safe and sound, it appears. So let's hope and pray for that. Let's hope and pray for a safe conclusion to this. I don't want to see anyone get hurt, especially law enforcement. I know that the marshal service that's on this, they are uh, of the best professionals in law enforcement. So uh, let's just hope for a safe conclusion to this case. I don't want to see anyone else get hurt, including the two individuals individuals that are on the on the run and um that's really it again uh, something real big develops we'll be right on it uh i apologize for going on from my car i just uh was out and about when bill called me and talked about going on so uh we'll be right on top of it guys uh thank you uh inspector ronald Shindell, for the 1999 super chat and thank you for all your support all the time folks uh you know as as we said we're going to be on this case um and uh, what's up, Pattaya? Thank you so much for the 99 uh, Super Chat. Folks, we're going to be all over this case. It's a very interesting case. It's a very important case. Uh, as I think Lieutenant um, Pranzo said earlier, this could serve as sort of a, um, a you know, a, a roadmap for what not to do as a correctional officer or as a correctional facility across the country because so many red flags, yet they went unseen and uh, lack of supervision, lack of follow-up, all of this puts the uh, the public in danger. So, folks, uh, I, I just want to wish everyone a great day, and thank you so much for coming on, especially coming on twice, you folks that uh, tuned in twice. I really appreciate that. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Stay safe, everyone. One episode.